Justin from the Entertainment Outlet. I'm here with Sean Drover of Act of Defiance. How are you, Sean? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, great show tonight. You Thank guys you. You were awesome. Thanks. Um, so it's been you know, about a year and a half now, maybe a little more, since you and uh, Chris, both on the same day, said you guys were done with Megadeth. Mm -hmm. So about how long after that was it before you, the two of you reached out to each other and decided you wanted to do something together? Was It was almost almost right away. Yeah. You know, once I <clears throat> once I made the decision that I was leaving, and I let Chris and, and David know, <coughs> Chris was kind of thinking the same thing. So it didn't take us long to say, well, why don't we? You know, we both want the same thing. We wanted to write heavier music, and and we wanted to express our own ideas. Like, well, why don't we just, you know, join forces and do something together? And that's exactly what we did. So you know, we dove head first into it like right, right away, and. Uh, you know, we had to do everything ourselves. Really, it was it was just Chris and myself at the time. Um, you know, we wrote the record uh, musically by ourselves, and and uh, we started writing lyrics. And then we got our singer Henry, he, and and he started helping out. It was it was just we were trying to do ten different things at once. You know what I mean? Write a record, get signed, f all these things that go into you know creating a band and and putting out a proper release. So, looking back now, um, I don't know how we did it. It was a lot of work, um, but we just we were so determined to write a really aggressive record, um, and we just hoped that things would fall into place. And lucky, uh, luckily for us, they have. So we're really thankful. How did you guys hook up with Henry and Matt? <clears throat> Matt was easy. I've known Matt for 16 years. When Shadows Fall uh, supported King Diamond, yeah. uh, when Glenn was in King Diamond, I helped out for the, I helped them out for the summer. I uh, went on tour with them. It was mostly to hang out with my brother and, and uh, just to kind of help out and stuff. And Shadow Swell was direct support. Um, so I, I got along great with those guys right away. And I always remembered that that Matt was very, he's a very good guy. He wasn't too boisterous or obnoxious or whatever, you know what I mean? And he was, he, you know, he seemed to be the business guy of the group, you know what I mean? And I always remember that, aside from, from being a really good guy. Um, and oddly enough, Shadow Swell, when Chris and I were forming Act of Defiance, um, the Sh Shadows Fall were stopping touring at that point, and I just saw somewhere something like Matt was looking to, to for a gig, so I hit him up, and you know, because I knew he played bass as well as guitar, because he has another band that, that he plays locally called Cobra Kai, where he's the bass player. So I just hit him up. I said, "Hey, you know, we're, we're Chris and I are doing this, and uh, you know, what do you think?" And he was he dove right into it. So at that point, though, the record was already written, all the lyrics were written. We we're getting ready to go in the studio. So he just like jumped right into it. Here's dude. Here's the record. Learn it. You know, it was again. It was a, quite a daunting task for Matt as well. But uh, um, I think the results speak for themselves. So, how are the fans responding to the material? Everybody who comes to see us, we're getting a really positive response. So it, <clears throat> ultimately, that's what matters to us. Um, you know, it's funny. With of course, with the internet, you get the haters and all and all that. Um, crap which I, I could not care less about um <clears throat> you know i make music for myself and for the band and if you like it that's great if you don't that's fine you know what i mean it's like anything else you know what i mean right some people like yanni some people don't you know what i mean yeah. i so it's like um at the end of the day for me personally you know all you can do is try your best and try to make the best music you can and be earnest about it and not try to follow trends or Especially in heavy metal, they're you know try to make a hit or whatever. That's just a bunch of crap. There are no hits. You know what I mean? It's like to be metal, you should be metal, and that's what I am to the core. I mean, that's what I was brought up with, and that's what I love the most. Um, <clears throat> so again, I you know I do this for myself, and I do it for people who come to appreciate it. That's all you can really do at the end of the day, no matter who you are. You know what I mean? Some people are more successful than others. I don't base creating music on a success level. You know what I mean? Um, if it if it becomes successful, that's great, right? But ultimately, I, I, I do it to please myself, to, to make myself happy, and, and I can, you know, if, you know, once, however many albums we do with, with Act of Defiance, I mean, I always want to look back and say, you know, I'm proud of everything I've done with this, and, and, I, and I know I will be because I won't compromise. I, I refuse to compromise. You mentioned that you're metal to the core. How did you sort of start getting into... You know, playing music, playing drums, the, the early years. What, what sort of? Well, yeah. Well, that? my father. Well, we come from a very musical family. My father was a guitar player in a band. My older brother Brian, who taught my brother Glenn, uh, started to play guitar. 
uh, he played in a band as well. So you know, music was in our house from a very, very early age. My sister was into like Deep Purple and Sabbath and all that stuff when it was just coming out. This is like in the early, early 70s. I was, you know, so I was exposed to all that stuff at a very early age. And uh, Glenn got a, a guitar for his ninth birthday. I got an acoustic and my brother Brian started teaching him. And it just, we just, we were so engrossed and we, it was just a big part of our house. Was, just music was playing all the time and we just loved it. It meant everything to us, you know? So um, it wasn't a far stretch for, for Glenn and I to become musicians. Um, but because Glenn took up guitar, I just, I kind of gravitated more towards drums. Although I've been playing guitar now for God, probably 35 years now. Um, drums to me were <clears throat> something I gravitated to more. And um, obviously I'm glad I did. Because I'll, I'll never be as good as, as Glenn and guitar or, or Chris or whatever. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it was just, I, I guess it was just meant to be. You know what I mean? I, I think, obviously, Glenn and I were certainly put on this earth to be musicians. So, What's your favorite thing about touring? You know, it must be different going out now, you know, in an RV with these guys. Well, the show. The, the show is what matters. No. We do this for the show. You know what I mean? Irregardless of how we travel. We actually, we travel quite comfortably, and here we have everything that a bus has. It's right. just on a smaller scale. So, um, But for me, yeah, I mean, everything revolves around the show. You know, uh, that's what we, that's why we do this. You know, that's why we leave our families and all the sacrifices that all musicians make who have families, kids, grandkids, in, in my case. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great sacrifice. Anybody who travels... You know, that's that's what sucks about traveling is not being uh, with your family. You know what I mean? Um, unless you're single, then it's a whole a whole different thing. But, you know, for me, I'm, you know, um, that's really hard. But I, I try not to I try not to focus on that on the, that part. I try to focus on the positive the positives of what I do, you know, and that's going out here. And, and, you know, for us, for me, I've been doing this for so long. I mean, I don't know any other way. I think it's important to support the music that you release and that's going out and playing you can't just put a video on youtube and just like whatever it's to me that's just like it seems like you're just a project at that point i mean i'm old school it's like what i the, the bands that i saw growing up they were all road dogs they went out and toured and toured and toured and that's what you did you play for the people that's how you build your fan base they come to see your show if they dig you they tell their friends you know what i mean right. That's that's the that's kind of the, the blue collar old school mentality that I have, because that's what I did. Um, so yeah, I mean that's ultimately I think why any musician, you know that's I would think that would be the most important thing would be the actual show, I and mean, that certainly is for me. Now you you had one of the longest tenures of you know, a member of Megadeth, mm -hmm. and uh, you know someone who came close. We obviously just lost Nick Menza. Yep, and that was really big and. Uh, I remember seeing a clip from a NAMM show of the two of you doing like a, a drum duel at a cymbal booth or something. Sure. Um, I was just wondering how that came about. Did you did you run into Nick much over the years, or was that just a that's the first time I met Nick? No, I mean we've kept in touch certainly later on after after I left. Yeah. Um, we kind of reached out to each other a little bit, and we corresponded through Facebook and stuff. And uh, I I was at NAMM. And uh, he was at the uh, the Soul Tone uh, symbol booth, which I thought he would think he was part owner of. I'm not sure, though. I just walked over there, and he was there. I said, hey, dude. And that's the first time I'd actually met him face-to-face, -face, and we just talked for a while. And he's, he's just like, hey, you want to jump on the drum kit and play? I'm like, sure. It was just an impromptu thing. It, was, it wasn't the drum duel, or you know what I mean? It's all that kind of crap. But um, Nick was very, very nice, and, and uh, we had a good talk, you know? And uh, he seemed... In great spirits and it was in good shape he, he looked good and uh, so it was nice to see and uh, so obviously it came as a great shock to me you know seeing him you know um, at the NAMM show being in such great shape and stuff and, and so clear-headed and all that um, <clears throat> I mean what can you say it's tragic it's tragic on a humanistic level never mind all the Megadeth stuff I mean right. he, he had two kids and that's uh, that's a horrible thing I can't imagine what is you know how that could um, you know, I'm sure his kids are struggling with that one. So that's, that's it's horrible. Um, what inspired you guys to start covering Unbroken by Pantera? We don't have enough material. <laughs> that's, you know what? I'm, look, I'll be, aside from the fact that, um, you know, we love Pantera. You know, Dime's one of my favorite guitar players. You know, Vinnie Paul's a friend of mine. I, I just, we all love Pantera. 
it's it's a no-brainer. It's it's a fun tune. Um, Chris came up, you know, we said, you know, what are we going to do? And, you know, last on the last tour leg we did, we did a, a tribute to, to Lemmy passing away. Of course, we did an Ace of Spades for, for that entire tour leg, um, which was great fun. So we, we said, okay, we need to do, you know, we're a song short in our set. You know, we play all 10 songs from our record, but we need a song or... Uh, one song cover song is good because you don't want to play too many then because then you it's a bit much i think so to do one and chris you know hey what do we do unbroken by pantera like cool i mean it, it was as simple as that and it's actually been a lot of fun playing it because um, it's got a, a couple of quirky time signatures in it so it, it took me a minute to to sit down and listen to it and remember it again um but it's been great fun playing it and the reaction to it has been uh, great as well so why not so the Hate Breed tour is almost done. Yep. You got tonight, tomorrow in Connecticut, and then you guys head off on some headlining dates for a couple weeks. Yep. And then what's next with Act of Defiance after that? We're I think we're gonna mix it up. We're, well, obviously we're gonna start to. I've already got a bunch of ideas for the next record. We're gonna start gathering ideas, um, but as well we're we're still we still want a tour for this record. So I think we're gonna take a month or two off to kind of get our heads together with creating new music and getting ideas together, formulating songs and stuff. But we also want to, um, again, we want to do some more touring for Birth and the Burial. So y you can do both nowadays, you know what I mean? You don't, nowadays, because, you know, the only thing that we record in the studio are, are my drum tracks. You know, Chris records guitars and, and vocals at his studio. Matt records bass at his studio. They, all, they both have home studios. But I'm, I'm again, I'm old school. I want to go in a studio and, and record drum tracks in a real studio. And I like the vibe of it and, and the, you know, the creative process of that. Um, but once I do my drum tracks, those guys can, you know, it's not like you have to go into studio for these two weeks, you know, we could go, you know, we can do stuff and then, okay, take a month off. We're going to go tour. So nowadays it's, it's kind of easy to kind of, um, be able to do both. So we want to utilize both. We still want to promote the record, um, for the bear, but we want to get going on the next one. We don't want to wait too long that people have a tendency to forget things quick. So, um, you know, we, the record's been out now for almost a year. So it's, it's time to get going on the next one. Well, very cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next and uh, see you guys the next time you come around. Thanks, man. Right, Appreciate thank it. Yep. Yeah, good to see you.